first year that I was ever in public school was in the eighth grade. Prior to that, I'd always been in these sort of pretty sheltered private Christian schools. That was the year that Lonesome Dove came out uh, by Larry McMurtry. I was a huge fan of horses and the West and just the whole sort of mythology of that. My eighth grade teacher was a woman named Marsha Kallenberger. She called my parents on the phone and asked them if she could give me a copy of this enormous Western novel. By some, I guess, minor miracle, my parents who had sort of, you know, just created this sort of very sheltered environment that I lived in said, sure, go ahead and give it to them. And I read, you know, that novel, and it was definitely my gateway into well-written books. That was sort of a life-changing moment for me. And I don't think that Painted Horses would necessarily exist if I hadn't had that introduction. One teacher just did the right thing at the right time. I had a two-hour school bus ride to high school the first three years I was in high school. Two, two hours one way. So I was on the bus a lot. And I read the book, I think, three times my freshman year of high school. So, I mean, the, by the time I got into my mid-twenties, I mean, I had toted this book around with me all over the place. I lived in Phoenix for a while. I lived in a really remote area of northeastern Oregon for a while. And I always took this book with me um, just as sort of a totem. It was a first edition, first print run, one of the sort of great relationships of my life. I gave that book to her um, for a birthday present because she had sort of, you know, made as big a mark on me as the book did. And so I no longer have it, but I know where it is. And I know, you know, what bookshelf it sits on. And that's, you know, that's where it belongs. Uh, when I was, I think, about 20, I was working full-time for my father, um, who is a, a carpenter and building contractor. We were doing a remodel job on a rental house that um, was owned by a lady whose retired father really had nothing else to do except hang out with us all day long. He told me that he had been an equine veterinarian for his career, and then he said, you know, I, I was actually involved in the last mounted U.S. cavalry effort that there was in the U.S. Army in World War II. I was in North Africa initially and we invaded Sicily. And he's telling me these stories and I just sort of tucked that away in the back of my head and you know was always very very fascinated by it. That was just sort of a launching off point for what became this novel. From the get-go I, I knew that the biggest roll of the dice that I was sort of making was telling half of the novel from the point of view of a young woman. But I thought, you know, if I can pull that off, I'll have achieved something that I can really be proud of. My editor is Amy Hundley, and I wanted to work with a female editor if possible because I knew that that was kind of a very pivotal dimension of the book and it had to be really right. Um, and, you know, I have to give Amy a lot of the credit for making that component of the book, I think, work as well as it, as it seems to. I wanted to have a sort of coming-of-age component to it, and I wanted to have a sort of frontier experience. Being that the novel's set in the 1950s, you know, there was very much a frontier for, for women at that time. Um, especially, you know, women who were just starting to sort of be able to access, you know, professional careers and go out and achieve their destiny. It's a romantic notion, but, you know, I think it was also just a very pivotal time for women. Mm -hmm.